Necrobius. Hey, you for your virtual machine, Cal? Two. I use VMware because it's the okay. only one that even remotely works. I use I, both, honestly. Just keep them different. I can't remember which one I used that actually worked with the Abyss game that I installed. Um, like, so, I believe DOSBox with VMware. Windows 3.1 is perfectly acceptable for Windows 3.1 era games. Right. But, uh, when you start hitting, like, 95, 96, um, I find that, uh, Virtu uh, virtual box can't do it. It's just it doesn't work. Uh, I, I just, one of those one of those gave me a tremendous amount of problems that when I tried to use it. So I don't know which one it was. Let's check out your wish list here. But yeah, Date um, added. so we click uh, make cheese and it tells us about the author. So. <laughs> One that... of the first people ever to use the word pork pie in a religious context. That sounds so... I haven't had a pork pie before. Is that, are those supposed it. to be good? I don't I know. I think Shepard's Pie and that's pretty good, but... It's so, yeah. interesting to me that in the, uh, the, the Queen's English part of the English-speaking world that a uh, pie can also be savory. It amuses me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is um, Necrobius Beta, which means that it sometimes crashes or has some problems. I have tried to get my way through this game before, and uh, I got stuck. The short answer is I couldn't figure it out. I so see. wait, was this one was this one unreleased or? Yes, this is the unreleased one that found its way uh. onto Adventure Legends extraordinarily quickly, despite it basically being beta and leaked onto like. Was it actually leaked, basically, by the creator onto the HD101 forum? Something like that, yeah. Someone talked to him about it. It's like, oh yeah, I have that. And they just gave the guy a link to the file, and then there hmm. you go. Interesting. And so now, I take it this is a pretty late beta? Ah, uh, yes. It's extremely late. This is, um... I'm pretty sure the game was literally finished, more or less. Like, there might be a bug or two in here. But it was, like, mm -hmm. feature complete, ready to go, and then, um... It, lost publisher support or whatever, and it was like, well, now we're not uh -oh. releasing it. Uh, it was going to be released by Psygnosis, I want to say. That sounds about right. Yeah, interesting. Gotta finish that circuit with that man's face. Oh, yeah. Alright. have a seizure. Well, that's good. There's nothing connected to this circuit. That's great. This is gonna make it fucking great. Sorry, I'm gonna get pretty annoyed at this game because I got stuck. Is it supposed to be in black and white? Is this like a Wizard of Oz situation where it gets more, it slowly gains more color? Um, I believe there's no power in this segment at the moment. Like, there's no brain power. Oh, okay. And uh, if we manage to get the uh, the brain going again, it will uh, boot up because you can see some electricity lines through it. It might be bugged right. out. This game might actually be trying to run at a different uh, graphics setting than the one that I have picked, so we will see it one. It looks about right. There is color, it's just some of it's black and white, so I assume that was a game mechanic. Y yeah. Um, and the title screen looked correct. Ah, and this door is red. So yeah, that would be correct. It's not a weird shade of purple. Yes, I mean, the color choice is, uh... Psychedelic. There yeah. Yeah, hey, it's Balls 3D, except it's actually pre-rendered this time. Squat. Mm -hmm. Blah. Squat. Blah. That's the, uh, that's the, <laughs> that's the whole, uh, thing. Okay, so, um, again, this is actually, uh, it's, it's kind of very similar to Alice, this game, in a lot of ways, because you do just sort of click things, hoping that the end result is, uh, beneficial to you. Uh, the problem is, unlike Alice, this game uh, is very much uh, and a, a puzzle adventure game. You are supposed to solve it. And I really can't by default figure this game out. It's quite unusual.
I'm glad that it saw, like, eventual, uh, actual semi-release, but... Good luck figuring it out. There is a, there is the walkthrough that the creator shared, which is about the closest thing to, uh, making this game physically possible to sort of make sense of. Mm. Um, I have gotten significantly further than where I am at the moment. I just can't quite remember how to do it. It probably does involve this door here, so I'll probably come back to that door in a second. Just click our way through that door and see if we can uh, get it right. But essentially, yeah, you got these doors and they take you to the other areas, which are puzzles. And then there are more areas. The game opens up even further, which is kind of a good thing, but also kind of frustrating because it means that uh, you've got even so more. So this is very much a miss style adventure game. It's a hub, essentially, that leads to more puzzles. Yeah, and then I think that they eventually lead to uh, even more stuff to uh, boogie around in. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is the vast majority of the game, is clicking stuff and hoping that stuff works, but it's, uh, good luck making sense of this, like, this is making sense to you guys, because you're seeing everything that I am seeing, and it doesn't make sense. I have to wonder if it was intended to be this way, if it's just unfinished, or... Eh. Like, did they ever say what state of completion this game was in was leaked? It seriously was, like, next to release complete. It was, like, it was done. Um, it's called a beta in the, uh, thing. But again, once you call something a beta, it's actually almost finished. Like, that's the, that's what beta means. You know. Beta is only a very short step away from, like, complete. It's just a clean-up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, beta is feature complete, pending quality assurance. And then you have release candidates, which are even closer. There's no real gold standard for development processes, though, so really, uh, this is kind of relative to begin with. I think there's one more door around here that I can click around. Another thing that bothers me about this opening area is you can see that it looks like you can walk around a very large area, but you're actually only on a very small track that you, uh, can walk around. I'm so certain it has something to do with that colorful door, but I can't quite remember. Here's my hand, and this is not helpful. We can click the question mark, and it will, uh, I don't know. Open that. But yeah, so this game... I have gotten a lot further than this, I just can't quite remember the step to do it. Which isn't a particularly good sign when we're just kind of super trapped in this uh, segment. It's kind of a typical problem with um, this era of adventure games. Is that if you don't understand the logic behind the puzzles and you accidentally solve it, then you're you kind of screwed yourself over in a way. Yeah, and the artist struggle. Like, hey, look what we can pre-render. Let's make nothing make any sense ever. It really doesn't. That's make That's one sense. thing I think that people don't give Mist enough credit for is that it actually is a cohesive game. Like, it makes sense. Yeah, like it's weird, but it's not quite this weird, and it's at least internally consistent for the most part from our Right. Plan. Well, Mist makes a lot of sense. It's got a very concrete world. Mm -hmm. It's it's very important. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this room. I just can't remember what to do in this room. Because you get to... Well, I notice you click on something and a big angry spike ball appears. Yeah, there's the angry spike ball. And then you the, can't... The deep logo mid-transformation. You, you can't do anything in the room. Then if you click the spike ball again, it goes back to a door. And then you can click the door... And then you go into the door, and then you've got an option to click while inside the door, and then you're in the other side of the door. Ah, I did it. Alright, I managed to click back out of the door. Alright, we did it. We got through. You have to click out of the room, and it's only the absolute bottom millimeter of the screen. So it kind of has a an issue uh. where... Well, if I, I'll show it right here, and you'll be able to see with your eyes. 
you can see the massive area that the forward arrow occupies. And then if you go down to the very bottom of the screen, you get about three or four millimeters of backwards arrow. And yes, you just have to backwards step out. All right, so this is the next area. Um, I'm assuming you do actually have to go back to that other area once you solve the puzzle in here. Uh, which basically involves more of these brain nodes, I think is what they're supposed to be. They're like brain portals. This is the Axion. To enter this path, you must detonate on the other side. All right, fair enough. That makes sense to me. So you need to find another, it looks like a de decahedron or something, and then click on that, I assume. Uh, no, I just turned the screen around. Oh, that's really kind of obtuse. Yeah, it just it makes you go from one direction. You had to do like a lateral motion, which is really strange. Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd thing. I'm like, it's pretty cool. You get to this sort of stuff. If you're a fan of mid-90s CG, it's a freaking cool experience. I mean, it's certainly more, uh, interactive than Alice was. It's got some stuff going on, and it, uh, can remember states of different things. So that's nice. I think you can die in this, though. So that's always... You stumbled into a neural unwelcome. loop. A long series of nerves that feed each other in a continuous ring. There is no way to escape. You weigh exactly 59 pounds. Ah uh, yes, game oh, over. Hey, um... <laughs> I like we're just like game over. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. And then he turns into a bunch of donuts. So yeah. what killed you exactly? The angry Moai head? I walked into a room. It was that was my mistake. I shouldn't have walked into a room. <laughs> <laughs> so we're well, done. You, you just you just walk in a room, you die. Uh, you click on that chair, you die. I think if you don't click on that chair, I think you're alright. So wait, how are you supposed to know that would do that? What do you mean, how are you supposed to know how to not die? It's the I Sierra mean... School of uh, our Adventure Logic. <laughs> like... You don't know until it happens. Yeah. Uh... Okay, I have to ask... How much of this game is trying to be... Well, well, deep, and how much of it is just trying to be an asshole? Um, it's just the kind of game that's designed by someone who doesn't really understand games, like how to balance them, how to make them fair, how to make them fun. Like, it's just, it's got that, like, ever-present vibe. It's very common of games made by programmers, especially, where it's just like, hey, you know what would be a great idea? If, uh, you, uh, the game killed the player when they opened this door, because that'd be funny and shit. It's like, no, that'd be frustrating. No, it'd be great! And then they just, that's like, that's the whole game is being deliberately frustrating because it would be interesting or something. I mean, I was watching a uh, a developer playthrough of um, The Colony for Mac, and he was actually talking about how he did stuff like that in his game. And he was like, yeah, it was really unfair and extremely frustrating. That was stupid. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> But yeah, you get to go through different worlds. And, you know, this is, again, it's it's cool uh, s sort of CG graphics, if you like that sort of thing. Which I do, so this is, uh, this is very much a thrill for me to be able to play a game like this that didn't exist until someone actually bothered to ask the creator if he still had it. Ah, the letter N.
I, I can't understand what he's saying, but I do think that this might be one of the, uh, the more beta-y elements. The sound really needed to be remixed to a more reasonable level. Because you can't hear the voice over the music volume. And it's too old to have a multi-part slider. Uh, I can't really work out what you're supposed to do. Click the head, nothing happens. Click the other head, nothing happens. Oh, hey, it's the Moai again. Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the villain of the game. In case you weren't able to pick up on that, um... How do you tell? Uh, he, you're in some, like, mad science brain or some evil person's brain for some reason. And, uh... Your goal is to do something. This is stuff that I think is in the manual of the game, and it explains it kind of very vaguely at the uh, start. So I don't really blame the game for that. That is definitely something that would have been a uh, sort of better covered um, if it wasn't a beta that hasn't been 100% cleaned up. Because I, th I think it is in the manual sort of thing. You know, check the manual, suckers. Sort of deal. Too far. Too far. Yes, this game does go too far in places. Alright, you can see this this environment's kind of similar to the other one. It's just graphically uh, got colors. Alright, that's an interesting thing to point out to me. Thank you, game. I mean, this is a... So right, some stuff happens. It's kind of cool if you like stuff. It's certainly a thing. The uh, fractal meringue pit. And uh, I have no idea what this is, but the cover art to uh, the Division Bell is everywhere. I'm afraid you're just going to have to do this one on your own. It's just told me to solve the puzzle on my own. Uh... Which is something I don't care to do, because uh... it's a music puzzle. Uh... And I am, I am actually basically tone deaf, so music puzzles are not very useful to me. Especially since I don't actually know what the initial uh, sound puzzle is. So this is uh, not, not great. I don't understand games that do this. It's like a color puzzle that doesn't have like a shape element to go with it for people that are colorblind. Yeah. Because if you look at any game with a tone puzzle, that is the one puzzle most oh, people are going to get stuck on. Yeah, and if you if you don't succeed, the game kicks you out of that puzzle. It doesn't kill you for failing, so there is that. But yeah, it's um, I actually don't know where the solution to that puzzle is. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. But you know, you gotta find it. <laughs> Up, it's it's being bitchy to me, telling me to uh, complete the game before I complete the game. All right, fair enough. I I know it was just some vague hope that I wouldn't have to. Uh, oh, this pathway seems to be locked. Um, I really hope that that isn't locked forever because that means that the game has just dead ended me. For curiosity. Um, and that's basically all I can really show you of Necrogos because I haven't. You know, I'm gonna go maybe out on a limb here and maybe say it went a huge loss. This never came out. Yeah, it's really cryptic. It certainly is a, a difficult game to understand. I don't know if it was going to include some, uh, you know, uh, 
ex extraneous material that might have helped make sense of the game. Okay, I need to issue a retraction on my earlier uh, trivia nugget that Psygnosis was supposed to be publishing this. I was wrong. The game I was thinking of was, in fact, the Eastern Mind series. Ah, yes. Because oh, yes, Eastern yeah. Mind, The Lost Souls of Tom No, was, in fact, going to be Psygnosis published and was even listed in their catalog in 1994. Yeah, uh, the Legend along of the with Eastern Mind 2 Chu Tang. But, to my knowledge, neither one actually came out. I mean, I'll need to look through my, my magazine scan again, just to make sure. Yeah, you get to summon a uh, Grimace. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it's warm Grimace, but not no warmed Grimace. So, I'm pretty sure, uh... I'm not quite sure what you do with Grimace. He might be, um... Related to the brain cell thing, the fuse that explodes. I love how he looks like he hasn't slept in a week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, a uh... There's stuff in this this production. Okay. Okay. There's a green thing. I'm clicking it, but it's not doing anything. Which is never a good sign. Whoop. Oh, we broke it? Yeah, we broke it. Let's try again. Can I rotate this? It might be one of those puzzles that, like a reverse Simon says, where you just had to guess the correct order to click things, uh, click on things in the scene. I'm not sure. Nah. I can't tell. I, uh, yeah, no, it's a, you can move the cannon. Uh, of course. Wait, you have to click and drag? Yes. Weird. And I'm not quite sure what I succeeded in doing. Did you actually succeed? Did it give you like a uh, any sort of positive confirmation? Um, I think the cannon's position has saved in a new position. Yes. So if you could figure out what hmm. the purpose of the cannon was, you would now you would now have a uh, a new puzzle. So it's now blinking to the purple thing. I don't really know what that means. I do know that the puzzle exists, so... Yay? Again, yeah, it's just really cryptic. I don't know if anyone in their right mind would have really... Well, again, weird cryptic puzzle games where, um, you know... They made more sense when people had played so many puzzle games, or adventure puzzle games, that they really could only be, uh... They could only be stumped by games that just made absolutely no sense. Because they had worked their way through games that actually made sense. And now we're back I think it was more a mix of multimedia and the whole mist craze. Like, people... A lot of people don't give Mist credit, like I was saying earlier. That is a very logical game. It gives you tons of contextual clues. Most of the puzzles are either mechanical or logical in nature, so you just have to think a little bit. Here it's like, hey, what can we do that's like Mist, but is it Mist? Uh, just make a bunch of crazy crap and link it together. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's see if we... Uh... Okay, so now so you're stuck is... in the death room. So I'm, I'm kind of having to issue a lot of retractions, but I must issue a retraction to my previous retraction about Eastern Mind. It was not, in fact, Psygnosis. It was Sony Interactive, who had just bought Psygnosis. Well, that's very close, so fair enough. And this was in, like, 1995-ish. It's just in a in-magazine, like, preview catalog thing, alongside PC versions of stuff like Twisted Metal and Warhawk. And sentient. 
Yay, sentient! Don't don't play that game. That game's impossibly insane. I'm being scanned. I like what the game tried to do. It's just not playable. Okay. Okay. That wasn't it, guys. That wasn't it. <laughs> Alright. Unfortunately, that wasn't it. So, you know. Alright. We did it. We escaped. No, I don't know what happened. I don't know why. <laughs> this game probably made sense. No, this game never made sense. This game wouldn't have made sense to any human being that has ever lived. It doesn't. Nope. So, what do you see we're gonna play after this? Um, I can quickly run the game that I was playing. The uh, the other day, the last night, um, which basically means that we're sort of going on a descent into more and more bizarre games that, by all rights, shouldn't exist. So, this one shouldn't exist because it is unplayable and confusing. But, uh, you know, there's there's some graphics here, the elements that uh are here look nice there clearly are puzzles if you're uh if your brain is somehow insane you might be able to solve them uh and you know since it was never released you can play it for free because you don't have to feel bad about that i do believe that the uh I think that graphic that comes up when we pull this fuse is the, uh... Yes, it is. It's the, uh... That purple room with the book in it. Uh, the one that's in the giant cauldron. So, I believe this is hinting that you need to go and solve a puzzle in the giant cauldron. But I do have a better idea, and it's quit.